Welcome to Math with Professor V. In this video, we're going to look at doing calculus with parametric curves. If you need a recap of parametric equations and just the basics, I'm going to link some videos in the description and one up here in the top right. But this is more of just a continuation video to give you more exposure to different kinds of examples that you're going to encounter in your Calculus 2 class primarily. Just as a quick little recap though, parametric equations, if we're in Calc 2, are equations of the form x equals a function of t and y equals some other function, we'll usually call it g of t. And x and y are defined in terms of some third variable, which we call a parameter t. And so each value of t, it determines some point x, y, which we can plot in our normal coordinate plane. And then as t varies, the point x, y, will vary and it traces out a curve and we'll call this our parametric curve. So you don't see t being plotted, okay? We can add as we trace out the curve what t is equal to at various places, but even though there's three variables going on, you're only graphing two of them, okay? In general, the curve with parametric equations x equals f of t, y equals g of t, and t being between a and b inclusive has initial point f of a g of a and it has terminal point f of b g of b that's if t doesn't extend forever so sometimes you'll see t is bounded so then we have an initial point and a terminal point on our curve if t is unbounded then the curve will extend forever so just be super careful make sure you put arrows or don't put arrows when appropriate, okay? And we're also gonna pay attention to the direction of motion. And then like I mentioned, if you go on to take Calc 3, you'll see parametric equations again, but this time you'll have X of T, Y of T, and guess what? Yes, Z of T, it happens. Okay, so just let's do a little warm up problem. And here um, we're given parametric equations, okay? and a parameter for the motion of particle in the xy plane. Identify the particle's path by finding a Cartesian equation for it. Graph the Cartesian equation, and then indicate the portion of the graph traced by the particle and the direction of motion. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find a Cartesian equation for these parametric equations. Another way that you'll see a problem like this, um, the directions could also state eliminate the parameter. It means the same thing, eliminate the parameter. You know, there's a bunch of typos right here, parametric equations and, and, oh, get rid of this. Okay, anyways. So when you're dealing with parametric equations of this form, x equals two sine t, and y equals five cosine t, the way we eliminate the parameter is by using a Pythagorean identity. What am I talking about? Well, hopefully you remember sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one, right? This is gonna be the key in order for us to be able to eliminate the parameter successfully. So what you do first is you isolate the trig functions in each of the parametric equations. So I'm gonna have over here, x divided by two is sine t, and y divided by five is cosine t. And then we know, okay, well, sine squared t plus cosine squared t is one. That's always true. And I can just replace sine squared t with x over two squared. And then cosine squared t is y over five squared equals one. So now I've eliminated the parameter. There's no t's. And this is a Cartesian equation. Cartesian meaning we're in the xy plane, the Cartesian coordinate system. So the first part's done. Then we need to graph this. Well, hopefully you didn't forget all of your pre-calc and all that good stuff. This is the equation of an ellipse. If you need a review of conic sections, I'll have videos linked in the description. So when I look at the equation of the ellipse, I can tell the center HK is at zero, zero. So our standard form, when we have the equation of an ellipse, it'll be X minus H squared.
squared over, and then it's either a squared or b squared, depending, plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Now, a and b can be swapped. How do you know which is a, which is b? a is bigger. That's it. Literally, that's it. Okay. So the center is at 0, 0. I can see from here, like in this case, a is 5 and b is 2. It's the other way around because the bigger number is underneath y. Okay. So a is 5, b is 2. And those values tell me how far to move in the x and y direction from the center. They give me the lengths of the major and minor axes, half the lengths of them. Um, we don't need to find foci and all that, but I'll just list out where the vertices are and we can start graphing. So the center is at 0, 0. Now here, since 2 is underneath x, that means from the center, I'm going to go 2 units to the left and right in the x direction two units in both directions. And then since five is underneath y from the center in the y direction, I'm gonna go up and down five units. So I'll go up to here, down to negative five. And then here's our ellipse. Okay. Very good. Now, just in case you didn't remember, the vertices are only the endpoints of the major axis. So they're the endpoints of the longer uh, side of the ellipse. So from here, I could say the vertices are zero plus or minus five in case anyone was interested. Okay, that's more than enough. So we've got the Cartesian equation graphed. Indicate the portion of the graph traced by the particle and the direction of motion. So here they told me t varies from 0 to 2 pi. So since 0 to 2 pi is a complete revolution, I know that the entire ellipse is going to be traced out. What I'm not sure of is what the direction of motion is. So what we're going to do is plug in values of t the parameter into x and y to see how the ellipse is being traced out as t increases. So we can make a little table, t x, which is two sine t, and then y, which is five cosine t, okay? So let's start with zero. x would be two times sine of zero, which is zero, so that's zero and y would be five times cosine of zero, which is one, so this is five. So the point is zero comma five. That means the graph starts right here at zero comma five when t is equal to zero. Now what should I plug in next? What would make sense? Not two pi, no, two pi is just gonna get me all the way back around and I won't know if I went this way or if I went this way, do you see? If I, <laughs> so that's not helpful. You know what else is not helpful? Plugging in pi. Plugging in pi is gonna get me to the halfway point, halfway around, but I still won't know, did I go this way counterclockwise or did I go this way clockwise to get down there? Do you see the issue? So think ahead, plug in something that's gonna be useful, that it's gonna give you some information. How about pi over two, okay? So now let's see, x equals two times sine of pi over two is one, so that's two. Y equals five times cosine of pi over two, which is zero. So this point here is gonna be two comma zero. Well, where's that? That's over here, and that happens at t equals pi over two. So now I know the direction of motion is clockwise, and you can put that little arrowhead going that away. Okay, if you want to confirm, then you can plug in pi and then sine of pi. Well, that's just going to be zero. Good. And cosine of pi is negative one. So that's negative five. So zero, negative five. That's down here. T equals pi. And then you could keep going. If you did, I'm sure you can figure it out. T equals three pi over two. We'd be over here. And then T equals two pi. We get right back to where we started. Okay. So the direction of motion we are going is clockwise. Yes, very good. How was that? Okay, so that was just a warm-up example. We didn't do any calculus, but I just wanted to familiarize you with 
some parametric curves that come up very frequently, especially if you're going to take Calc 3. Oh, heavens. Okay, now let's move on to doing some calculus. Find an equation for the line tangent to the curve at the point defined by the given value of t. So here I have parametric equations, x and y, and they gave me a point t equals pi over 6. So if we're going to find the equation of a tangent line, I need two things. I need a slope. I need m tan, which is still going to be dy dx. And then I need a point, x comma y. And in this case, the point is at pi over 6. So let me figure out what the point is. That seems like it's going to be the easier task. So x of pi over 6 is pi over 6 plus cosine of pi over 6. What's that? Pi over 6 plus rad 3 over 2. And then y of pi over 6, that's 2 minus sine of pi over 6. Sine of pi over 6 is a half, so this is 3 halves. So the point is pi over 6 plus rad 3 over 2, comma, 3 halves. That's taken care of. Woo -woo. Okay. Then I need the derivative, dy dx, and I'll plug in pi over 6 to get the slope. Well, for parametric curves, what you need to remember is that the derivative is defined as follows, dy dt over dx dt. So dy dx is dy dt over dx dt, which, you know, like that formula makes so much sense to me. Good. You know, it looks like the dt's cancel. That's not what's happening. But if I had to invent a formula, this would be it. Fabulous. So let's go ahead. Let's compute each of the derivatives separately first, and then we'll put it all together. Um, x is first, so I'm just going to get dx dt. How about that? So dx dt is going to be derivative of t is 1. Derivative of cosine t is negative sine t. And then dy dt, derivative of 2 is 0. And then derivative of negative sine t is negative cosine t. Okay, so then dy dx is equal to negative cosine t over 1 minus sine t. That's done. And then in order to get the slope, right, m tan, what I want to do is take dy dx and evaluate it at t equals, what did they tell me? Pi over 6, right? Okay. At t equals pi over 6. So this is going to be negative cosine of pi over 6 over 1 minus sine of pi over 6. So let's see, cosine at pi over 6 is rad 3 over 2, so I'm going to have negative rad 3 over 2 in the numerator over 1 minus cosine of pi over 6 is a half. And then this ends up being negative rad 3 over 2 over 1 half. Those twos cancel, and I'm just left with negative rad 3. So that's our slope. That's m. That's m tan. And then do you remember what the point was? It was a bit of a wild point, yes. It was pi over 6 plus rad 3 over 2, comma, 3 halves. So to finish everything off, we're just going to go to point slope form. So y minus y1, which is 3 halves, equals m times x minus x1, which is pi over 6 plus rad 3 over 2. And then clean it up. So let's see. y minus 3 halves equals negative rad 3x. This is going to be plus rad 3 over 6 times pi. I'm just distributing. Distribute. Distri and I'm distributing the negative at the same time. I know, a little aggressive, but you guys are in Calc 2. You should, you should be just fine. And then that last one's going to be a positive. Oh, this is going to be cool. Because you have rad 3 times rad 3, which is just 3. And then this negative and this negative cancel. So I'm left with positive 3 halves. Okay? And then I'm going to add this 3 halves over. 
So then three halves plus three halves just gives me three. And our final answer is y equals negative rad three x plus rad three over six pi plus three. And you know why I like this one? Because the numbers are not, you know, the cutest. You have all these radicals and pies, but there's nothing wrong with it. We did a beautiful job. This is a correct solution. So work on not getting like anxious or having a meltdown just because everything doesn't come out to be like these, you know, simple integers that you prefer. Just deal with it. It's still lovely. It's still lovely. Okay, good. So now we reviewed how to do the first derivative, dy dx, with parametric curves. Now, what about when we find the second derivative? So the formula is a little different. That's the one that students kind of struggle with a little bit. So we just need the value of the second derivative at that point. Well, we know dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. And then to get the second derivative, okay, with respect to x, what you do is you differentiate with respect to t the first derivative dy dx and then you divide it by dx dt again okay and for a full little breakdown watch the lecture video where i introduce calculus with parametric curves but i'm just doing a recap so we can solve some more problems okay so here we go so x is cosecant t dx dt, you remember a derivative of cosecant? Oh good, yes, it's negative cosecant t cotangent t. Excellent. And then y is 2 cotangent t. So dy dt, the 2 just stays, comes along for the ride. It's going to be negative 2 cosecant squared t. Perfect. So first let's get dy dx dy dx would be negative 2 cosecant squared t divided by negative cosecant t cotangent t. And then the negatives cancel. This cosecant is out of here. And then I just have 2 cosecant t over cotangent t. Now, no, I'm not going to stop here for a couple reasons. It's not completely simplified. And what am I gonna do next? I'm gonna take the derivative of this, right? This is dy dx. I have to take another derivative with respect to t. And at the moment, oh my, I would have to use quotient rule. I would rather not, wouldn't you? I would rather not. So let's see if we can simplify this so that we don't have to do quotient rule. So cosecant t, that's 1 over sine t. So I have 2 over sine t in the numerator over cotangent t. That's cosine t over sine t. And then do you see? Ah, oh, yes, these sine t's cancel. And then I have 2 over cosine t, which, yes, I can rewrite as 2 secant t. Perfect. So there's my first derivative. Now, I know at the end of the problem, I'm going to need to be plugging in t equals pi over 3, but you have to do that at the very end. You don't want to do it too soon because then you won't have a function. You'll just have a constant. I mean, it is a function, but once it's a constant, if you try to take the derivative, you're just going to get 0. So don't plug in the specific values till the end. Okay, very good. Now it's time for the second derivative. So here we go with respect to x. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t of 2 secant t, and then I'm going to divide all of this by dx dt once again. Here's dx dt, negative cosecant t cotangent t. Negative cosecant t cotangent t. So derivative of secant t, do you remember it? Yes, it's secant t tan t, and the 2 just comes along for the ride. And then we have divided by negative cosecant t cotangent t. Okay, you can try to plug in t equals pi over 3 now, but I don't advise you do so. Let's clean it up a bit more. Okay, so 2 secant t in the numerator, that's 2 over cosine t times tan t is sine t over cosine t. This little negative, I'm just going to put it all the way outside right now. It doesn't matter. You can move it wherever your heart desires. 
And then let's think. I have cosecant in the denominator. I'm dividing by cosecant. That's the same as multiplying by sine t over 1. And then, divide, so that that's here. And then dividing by cotangent, that's the same as multiplying by tangent. So I have another sine t over cosine t right here. Okay? I just wanted everything lined up. And I'm taking a look at things, and nothing cancels. Oh, well. We can deal. I have negative 2 times sine cubed t over cosine cubed t. So I can put those together and say I have negative 2 tangent cubed t. So there's my second derivative. That's pretty cleaned up. Whew, if you ask me and, and someone came up and said I need a third derivative, I'd be like, you got it. No problem. And then the last thing, we need to evaluate this derivative at t equals pi over 3. Okay, so second derivative of y with respect to x evaluated at t equals pi over 3. So this is another way to say plug in this value here, if you haven't seen that notation much before. So it's negative 2 times what's tangent of pi over 3? It's going to be rad 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, so it's just rad 3 cubed. Rad 3 cubed is 3 rad 3, so I have negative 2 times 3 rad 3, so this is negative 6 rad 3. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, how are we doing? The next one I have for you is very spicy. Are you ready? It's super spicy. So find the area. Find the area enclosed by the ellipse, x equals 5 cosine t, y equals 12 sine t, t between 0 and 2 pi. So the formula for finding area bounded by a curve in the x-axis when we are in parametric equations is you have integral from a to b of y dx. And let me graph really quickly. Where's a good, I'm on a black right now. Let's graph this ellipse momentarily. So x equals five cosine t and then y equals 12 sine t. So in the y direction, we're gonna go up and down 12 and in the x direction, we're gonna go left and right five. And since t is going from zero to two pi, I'm tracing out the whole ellipse. Okay, and we want the area enclosed by this ellipse. Okay, this area formula is for when we are integrating along the x-axis. So it's going to give me the area underneath the curve above the x-axis. If I want the area of the whole ellipse, I'm going to have to double this value. That way I get this portion as well. Okay, so we're going to put a 2 in the front once we establish how to set everything up. And then the other thing that's kind of funky, okay, is that when you integrate along the x-axis, you have to move in the positive direction. So where we're going to start is right here. Let me change back to a pen. We're going to start here, and we're going to stop here. So this is basically A, and this is basically B. But you have to figure out, in terms of T, right, what value will put me at A and what will put me at B, because you have to integrate this way, this way, along the x-axis. So if you're looking here, what would I need to plug in for t so that I'm at the point negative 5 comma 0? t starts at 0. Let's make a little table. t, x equals 5 cosine t, and y equals 12 sine t. When t is 0, where are we? x is equal to 5, y is equal to 0, so we're at 5, 0. Oh, that's at point B. Point B corresponds with T equaling 0. What about if T is pi over 2? 5 times cosine of pi over 2, that's 0. 
this is going to be 12. We're at 0, 12. So this is pi over 2. That's not helpful. What if t is pi? 5 times cosine of pi, that's going to be negative 5. This is 0, negative 5, 0. So t equals pi gets us to point A. So since we want to integrate from point A to point B, when we set up our integral, we're going to go in terms of the parameter t from pi to 0, which might seem backwards, but just remember, this integral is going to be done with respect to the direction of x increasing, okay? So you have to move in the positive direction along the x-axis. That's why we start at this point all the way to the left. How do we get there? t equals pi. And we're going to keep going to the point all the way on the right. How do we get there? t equals 0, okay? And then I told you we're going to double it. That way we get the area of the whole ellipse. And then I need y dx. Well, no, you're not going to actually put y into the integral. y is equal to 12 sine t. Let me color code for you. 12 sine t. And then what's dx? How do you find dx? You're going to take the derivative of x equals cosine 5t. So if x equals, oh no, 5 cosine t then dx is negative 5 sine t dt. So that's what I'm going to substitute in next, all of this, for dx. So then I have negative 5 sine t dt. How are we doing? Okay, let me recap up to here. a and b, we determined, need to be pi and 0, so that we go from negative 5, 0 to 5, 0. You have to move in the positive direction along the x-axis. I put a 2 outside because this formula gives us the area under the curve with respect to the x-axis. I want the whole thing to so double that bad boy. y, I'm going to replace with the parametric equation, 12 sine t dx. I had to take the derivative of this with respect to t, and then I got negative 5 sine t dt. Good? Okay. Then from here, let's see. I have negative 60, right? That's negative 60. And then a 2 sitting outside. So that's negative 120 integral from pi to 0 sine squared t dt. Looks good to me. And then in order to integrate sine squared, I need to use my half angle identity. So I have negative 120 integral from pi to 0, 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2t dt. And then outside, I can take that negative 1 half out of there. So I have negative 60 integral pi to 0, 1 minus cosine 2t dt. And then we're pretty much done. Negative 60, antiderivative of 1 is t. Antiderivative of negative cosine 2t would be negative 1 half sine 2t. And this gets evaluated from pi to 0. So let's see, this is negative 60 times 0 minus 0 minus pi plus 1 half sine of 2 pi is also 0. So all that I'm left with is negative 60 times negative pi, which is 60 pi. And that's it. We're done. Good? I think the trickiest thing was the setup and getting the limits of integration correct. Okay? So that's a challenging problem. Very advanced. Let's, let's move on. You'll feel refreshed. Find the length of the following curve. So you should have seen arc length already for um, curves to find y in terms of x or x in terms of y. But now we're doing parametric curves, so arc length formula. We have integral. Usually we put alpha and beta to represent limits for t. You could still do a and b, though. No one will be mad. And then you have dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. Okay? I usually tell my students, do all of this computation first before you set up the integral, because usually there's quite a bit of cleaning up and simplification that can happen, so do that sooner than later. Okay, let's start taking some derivatives. So dx dt, derivative of 6 sine t would be 6 cosine t, minus 
Now I have to do the product rule for 6t cosine t. So I'm going to put parentheses. Derivative of 6t is 6. Leave cosine t alone. Plus 6t times derivative of cosine t is negative sine t. Good? Okay, and then if I clean up, this is 6 cosine t minus 6 cosine t. And then this ends up being plus 6t sine t. These two cancel, cancel. And dx dt is just 6t sine t. Good. Now what about dy dt? Let's see. So dy dt is going to be derivative of 6 cosine t is negative 6 sine t plus, and then here we need product rule again, right? 6t times sine t. So derivative of 6t is 6, leave sine t alone, plus 6t times derivative of sine t is cosine t. And then, oh, the 6 sine t is gone because we have a negative 6 sine t, and all I have left is 6t cosine t. Very good. Now let's square each of these. Don't write the integral just yet. dx dt squared plus dy dt squared is going to be, be careful, This you have to square everybody. So 36t squared sine squared t plus 36t squared cosine squared t. And then I can factor out 36t squared, and I just have sine squared t plus cosine squared t, which is 1. Good. So this is just 36t squared. This is what's going to go underneath the radical in our integral. Are we happy about it? I couldn't be more thrilled. I could take the square root of that easy peasy. I love it. And then our limits, alpha and beta, are 0 and pi over 4. If you hate it, you can write A and B. I don't think your teacher would get angry. Okay, here we go. So arc length is going to be integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the square root of 36t squared dt. Now, technically, the square root of 36t squared is the absolute value of 6t. It's not just 6t. No. You're in Calc 2. Have some more self-control than that. But... Do I need to worry about the absolute value bars? Well, look at your limits of integration, 0 to pi over 4. That means t is always going to be positive from 0 to pi over 4, so I don't have to keep the absolute value bars. But you, sh you should tell people you thought about it, you know, that you're not some careless calc student. You're ever prudent, always maintaining that healthy level of paranoia to ensure you don't make some silly mistake. So 6t dt. Can you integrate that? I hope so. Otherwise, you're probably watching the wrong video. 3t squared from 0 to pi over 4. So that's 3 times pi squared over 16 minus 0. That doesn't clean up, huh? 3 pi squared over 16. Fabulous. Well done. I told you, this would seem relaxing right after the last problem. Okay, I have another arc length one for you. Why don't you pause the video, try it on your own. It would be good. Okay, so here we go. Let's take our derivatives first. dx dt, two thirds. Now, you bring this exponent down in the front, so I'm gonna multiply by three halves. You leave what's in the parentheses alone and you subtract one, the new exponent would be one half. And then by the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2t. Whew, did you get all that? Okay, good. If you mess the derivative up, it's going to ruin the whole problem, I'm sad to say. Those cancel. So then all we're going to be left with now is, let's put the 2t in the front, and then you have square root t squared plus 2. That's dx dt. Okay, good. Now let's do dy dt. Oh, how relaxing. It's just 2t. So dy dt is 2. Perfect. Now let's do all the cleaning up before we write the integral. So dx dt squared plus dy dt squared is going to be, you have to square everybody. So this is going to become 4t squared 
times, now the radical's gone, t squared plus 2. That's dx dt squared. Plus dy dt squared is just 4. Okay, so how far do you know to clean it up? Well, I just think back to myself. In the formula, all of this is going to be underneath a big square root sign, right? Can I integrate it just yet if I stopped cleaning up right now? No. So keep it going. Keep going till you're ready to set up your integral and be like, whoop, I got this, okay? So I'm, I don't got this. So let's distribute, distribute. This is going to be 4t to the 4th plus 8t squared plus 4. Okay, okay, things are looking promising. I'm so tempted to factor. Maybe things will factor beautifully. I can take a 4 out, and then that's t to the 4th plus 2t squared plus 1. And this is a perfect square trinomial. Somebody who wrote this problem just loved us. Thank you so much. This is t squared plus 1 quantity squared. Now, how would you feel if there was a big square root sign sitting above all this and you had to integrate? I feel, I feel footloose and fancy free. I'm ready. We can knock this out of the park. So arc length is going to be integral. What were the limits? Oh, beautiful. Zero to one. Some of my favorites out there. Zero to one. Square root. Four. T squared plus one squared. DT. Okay, great. I don't even have to worry about absolute value because t squared plus 1 is always positive. Also, these are positive, so we're good. So integral 0 to 1, 2, t squared plus 1, dt. If you want to tell everyone this is always positive, we don't need to stress about absolute value. I wouldn't integrate just yet. I always recommend taking that constant out of the integral first. Okay, it'll just make life a little easier. And then now let's go ahead and integrate. So you have 2 times 1 third t cubed plus t from 0 to 1. So this is 2 times 1 third plus 1 minus 0. I know I'm going fast here, but I feel like you probably can integrate a polynomial in your sleep. 2 times 4 thirds, so that's 8 thirds. And we're done. How was that one? Fun, right? I mean, if you're not having fun, then I feel really badly for you because, yes, this is calculus. It can be difficult, but there's so much beauty in it, and it'll, it gets more beautiful the more you learn. I always say, like, it's like putting a puzzle together when you're learning math. In the beginning, you just have some random pieces, and it doesn't kind of all make sense, and you don't see the picture, but then when you keep building and you keep filling in the pieces, the beauty unfolds. So just try to have fun along the way. People do puzzles for fun. I know you're probably taking this as a you know required course, but it can be thrilling. Okay, last one. Find the area of the surface generated by revolving the curves about the indicated axis. So we have two parametric curves and we're spinning around the x-axis. So remember our formula for surface area. It's 2 pi integral. You're going to have your limits, a and b, alpha, beta, whatever. And... In this case, if we're spinning around the x-axis, the radius, radius is equal to y, and then you have ds, okay? What's ds? ds is basically a little piece of arc length. So ds is equal to square root dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt when we're dealing with a parametrically defined curve. Okay, good. So let's start off, let's figure out what ds is and then we're gonna set up our integral. dx dt, derivative of sine t is cosine t. dy dt, derivative of two plus cosine t, negative sine t. So dx dt, squared plus dy dt squared cosine squared t plus negative sine of t squared, which is going to be positive. This is all one. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, I think we're ready to set up our integral because I can integrate that, no problem. So surface area is 2 pi 
the limits are going to go 0 to 2 pi. Now, I'm not going to write y. I'm going to write 2 plus cosine t. And then what's ds equal to? ds is all of this, which is square root of 1 dt. Okay. I think, I think we're in business. We have nothing else to do but just integrate this sucker. Okay. 2 becomes 2t plus sine t from 0 to 2 pi s. So this is 2 pi times 2 times 2 pi, that's 4 pi, plus sine of 2 pi is 0, minus 0, minus sine of 0, 0, and we're left with 8 pi squared. Okay, so just wanted to give you some extra examples besides what was in the intro lecture videos of doing calculus with parametric curves. If you found this helpful, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment down below. What did you think was the spiciest problem? Which one was your favorite? And if you need more help with calculus with parametric curves, let me know. I can solve some more examples. These ones are the ones that are on my practice exam that I give my students. But if you would like me to do some more, like out of the textbook, a little more straightforward, we can do that too. And then I'm going to put together a video on calculus with polar curves as well in the next few days. Okay, so stay tuned. Make sure you turn on the notifications so that you get a little ding every time I upload, which is pretty much every day. And then please follow me on Instagram, TikTok especially, and Twitter. I post there regularly. You can see what sort of shenanigans I'm up to. Because besides being a math professor and making YouTube videos, my passions include ballet, hot yoga, all things fitness. I love dancing. And I'll show you little snippets of my life. I have a good old time. So thanks for your support. I'll be back sooner than later. Love you all. Bye.